John Muir Way, Day 8. Preston Pans, not really, but got to stick with the title, to North Berwick, in which it was cloudy with a chance of damp patches. Given we were already past Preston Pans, allow me to take you back a moment to the previous night. Throughout the trip, Ed and I have been sharing a twin room, which seemed to come in various shapes and sizes, a double and a single being the most common, which seems a triplet to me, not a twin. So we've been taking turns at having the pick of the beds. Last night, we were in an Airbnb, which was great, but Ed got the double bed in the bedroom upstairs, and I had to convert the downstairs sofa to a bed. This wasn't quite as straightforward as it seemed, but it gave Ed enormous entertainment. I put on the undersheet, which was perhaps a wee bit smaller, better than a small bit of wee, I thought, and held in place by elastic bands. I was fearful that in the morning Ed would come down and find me trussed up like a cocoon. Finally, having removed cushions, placed pillows and the table to make a handy bedside table, I tried it out. Oh, me back, I exclaimed, or something like that. There was a significant iron part lurking under the cushions, like an iceberg. I moved the pillows to the other end, got sorted and into bed, then realised the lamp was on a timer switch, which would switch off far too late. I unplugged it and then decided I could plug my phone in because the bedside table no longer functioned in that capacity. Finally, I got to bed while whilst Ed snored softly upstairs. We've now got to that point where, as siblings, we are once again taking great delight in the misfortune of the other. I was really hoping his bed that evening would be a three-foot plywood thing. It wasn't. Bah, humbug. This morning, when replacing my rucksack, I discovered a couple of wet patches in my pants. Now, fear not, dear friends, whilst I'm a man of a certain age, carrying around prostate pills along with my inhalers, this was actually our washing from last night. We decided, as there was a washing machine, we could freshen ourselves up a little. We would smell as fresh as daisies. Hmm. Well, fresher than a cyclist on an innocent psychopath, at least. Everything else was dry and I hadn't noticed until I packed the pants that they still had damp patches. This meant I had to wear my anti-chafing shiny pants, which are great, but I have noticed my shorts tend to slide down as I walk. We set off at 10, our latest departure time on the whole trip, because, well, apart from the first day, but it was a shorter walk and check-in at North Berwick was from 3pm onwards. We meandered down the wooded path, noticing it was both cloudy and cooler than at any other point on the walk. We turned back along the coast path, which also meandered through the, the dunes up and down on sandy surfaces, which was energy sapping early on on the legs. At some point we walked along the beach and then picked up the path, which came and went somewhat with no signs to help out. We came to the end of a particular path, hitching up my shorts, and then had to pick our way back through shoulder-high bracken. Just as Ed said, look out for the nettles, nestling under the bracken, my leg discovered them. Ed didn't even have time to snigger before he also got snagged. We agreed this was jolly bad form, or words to that effect, and East Lothian Council could do better. We ploughed on through more vegetation. I ducked under a branch and then Ed exclaimed, Mine sticks up more than yours. I thought, that's a bit rude. But he was referring to his rucksack, which snagged him as he tried to duck under the branch. We entered Abelady and immediately noticed it was not Preston Pans. The Immaculate Bowling Club carried an advert for the funeral director and then next came the memorial garden and graveyard. We passed the village shop. Now, when you downplay your awaitros, I think you're getting seriously posh. The lamp posts were festooned with yarn and the local craft group had made a fantastic display. Following the way around golf courses approaching Galane, we came across a couple of older German ladies with their husbands and an old dog. Have you come from Edinburgh? they asked. Not today, from Kakenzi, I replied, pulling my shorts up blank faces. Are you walking for? Far. We're walking the John Muir Way, going to North Berwick today. We've walked from Helensborough. 
One of them made some sort of sound that was expressing, I believe, enthusiastic amazement. I wasn't convinced, however, that she had any idea where Helensborough was, and if I had said we'd walked from Kuala Lumpur or from that field over there, the sound would have been the same. Meanwhile, the slobbery elderly Labrador came and nuzzled my leg, leaving an impressive damp patch on my clean shorts. As we were going on our way, one of the ladies very kindly pointed out that we could walk up to the road and catch the bus to North Berwick. Get thee behind me, Satan. We walked on through Galane with its cafes and rare and vintage guitar shop, agreeing it definitely wasn't Preston Pans. Up a long hill and then going down and said we were still going up. I disagreed and said we were now going down. In the end, he had to concede, given the incontrovertible evidence that I was walking next to him having an argument. If we were walking uphill, Ed tends to be a tad ahead of me. How I suffer with my hill allergy. We stopped for lunch near Durleton. Durleton? Who knows? I couldn't agree. We couldn't agree how to pronounce that. We found the bench, unwrapped my banana, which I put in too large a bag in case it split and would make the contents of my bag soggy. A woman came and asked if we were walking the way. Yes, I'm walking the way, which we all know is code for those who are following Jesus. Would you like to know about Jesus? I didn't ask. And as her husband joined us, we had a reasonable, normal conversation. Well, I have to mention Jesus occasionally in this, otherwise I'll be defrocked and cast out into the darkness with a wailing and gnashing of teeth. Although I don't worry over much about this, as I know in such an eventuality I'll be in good company, won't I? They went on their way and we carried on ours. With just under four miles to go, the clouds got together and it went dark. Oops! As we walked through a crop field, a sign warned us not to let the children run through the crop field. I thought that would have been a handy sign when Theresa May was younger. The raindrops started and our pace became a route march. With two miles to go, we didn't want to get the wet weather gear out and were racing to get to the end before the heavens properly opened. Dodging along under trees, I eventually decided I needed to cover my rucksack. To do this without losing time, I unbuckled the straps as we were still walking and as we got to the shelter of a tree, swung my bag off, forgetting I was still wearing my hat, which was attached to a rucksack with a carabiner clip. It snagged on my glasses and the whole seamless transition turned into a right shambles from which Ed managed to untangle me. We redoubled our efforts, fair racing through the streets of North Berwick, arriving at our B&B at 20 to 3 which was shut. Until 3pm. No, let me in. I sat on the welcome mat and waited. At 3pm, we rang the bell. No response. I tried the phone number. No response. Finally, a whole six minutes past three, a dog barked and then finally a person appeared. Woo! Upstairs, Ed put the kettle on and set off the fire alarm. Dodging showers, we went to a local restaurant, the Herringbone, which served very tasty food. Not cheap, but hey, it was Ed's turn to pay. Returning to the hotel, having worn trousers for the first time on this walk, for the avoidance of doubt, I have been wearing shorts. I noticed at the bottom of my trouser leg a damp patch. <laughs>